Hey guys, so today I'm going to be making a video about five different builds you can make at five different price points this holiday season for 2022. The price points are $500, $750, $1,000, $1,500, and $2,000. Now this is my take on it. Obviously you can do different configurations. There's infinity different ways you can build a computer. So this is just my take and what I think would work really well at these five different price points. It's gonna be sicko mode. Let's do it. These builds are gonna be gaming computers, so I'm not gonna focus as much on the workstation side for people who need a computer to video edit or render a lot of stuff. I'm gonna be using PC Part Picker to pick out all my parts. I also made sure that all my parts are compatible and don't require BIOS updates with previous generation processors, which is something to look out for because I was building a computer with an i5-13600K, actually this one, and it didn't boot. I'm like, oh great, I forgot, I gotta do a BIOS update. Luckily I have 12th gen processors that allow me to do the BIOS update because you can't do the BIOS update with a new processor inside. So I made sure that all these parts don't require you to have the older processors as well as these newer processors because then that would defeat the purpose of having these price points because you have to have both processors or at least know someone that has these processors or borrowing a processor just to update your motherboard. I'll take a screenshot of what I mean because it'll tell you that this processor may not be compatible until you update the BIOS. I made sure that all that's eliminated so that you don't have to worry about it. So first off we have the $500 build. This is going to be for people who are just getting into gaming or just are on a really tight budget. It's kind of hard to build something for 500 that's really impressive. I mean, it'll allow you to play most AAA games, low to medium settings, so it's just an entry level PC. So keep that in mind, it's not gonna be very impressive. So I went with the AMD Ryzen 5 4600G. I know it has integrated graphics, I'm not gonna be using that at this price point of $100. I went with this one over an i3 because it's slightly cheaper. The motherboards are also a little cheaper for this processor versus the Intel boards. So with the motherboard, I'm going with the MSI A520M. It's a micro ATX motherboard. It doesn't have a lot of uh, upgrade capability just because it gives you two slots for RAM, but I mean, you're on a budget. It is what it is. For me, I would say always spend that extra amount just so that it allows you room to upgrade in the future because if you upgrade, you're probably gonna have to buy another motherboard. I went with Team Group T-Force Vulcan, 16 gigs of DDR4, 32 megahertz RAM. For storage, I went with an NVMe drive. I don't recommend putting your important documents or family photos on this. It's just so you can gain. $31.99, that's pretty good for a 512 gig NVMe. This graphics card, I know it's nothing impressive, but it'll allow you to play games at low to medium settings. It's a GTX 1650, four gigabytes of video RAM at 159 bucks. I just went with a cheap case, nothing special. You know, it's a $50 case, so I mean, it's not gonna be anything impressive. Then I went with a Thermaltake Smart 430 watt power supply. It's an 80 plus certified. It's not bronze, it's not silver or gold, but I mean, it is what it is. I actually went with the Amazon Basics mouse and keyboard for all the builds. If, if you wanna spend more on those peripherals, you can. It's up to you. I'll leave it up to you how much you wanna spend on that stuff. That pretty much completes it for $500. This is a very basic build. It's gonna get you playing games. It's not gonna look the prettiest. So if you have a $500 budget, this is what you could build. Just don't expect a pretty looking build. But hey, it works. For this, it's, that's a decent start for 500 bucks. All right, really quick, right before, mm, right before we start the $750 build, I gotta lubricate the mouth. Now for the $750 build, I upgraded the processor to a Ryzen 5 3600. For 2022, it is an older processor, but it's still very capable for that price point to handle most games, especially with the GP that it's paired with. I did upgrade the motherboard to an ASRock B550. All right, now this board has four RAM slots now, so that if you did want to add more RAM, you can. I would pay the extra amount to get the four slots. For some reason, it just pisses me off when there's two slots. It just looks, it makes your computer look super lame, and it doesn't let, allow you to use four sticks of RAM. It has RGBs, which makes it way cooler. For it, It's actually an ATX motherboard, so. Just more, more PCI slots, just, better a better platform to upgrade in the future so this time i went with corsair vengeance ram so you get some rgb in there so i've used this ram i know it's i've tested it 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 works well it's not going to help with gaming really 
It's still the same speed, 3200 megahertz, but you get RGB. Now I did upgrade the SSD to a crucial P3, one terabyte NVMe drive. It's a solid NVMe. You can store some important documents on here. I would trust it. Always have a backup. I don't want to be responsible for you losing your crap if it fails, but you get double the storage as the $500 build and you get a better SSD. So I went with the 6600 XT. You get double the video RAM with eight gigs of video RAM. And at $279, the comparable NVIDIA processor, there was over $100 more. This was just a better way to go for 750 bucks. Power supply, I went with the Thermaltake Smart 700 watt 80 plus certified power supply. It'll do the job. They're not modular, but it works. You do have better quality components with a better hard drive, better motherboard, better RAM, and you got them RGBs to make it look sick. So yeah, that's the best I think you can do with 750 bucks. So you get a you get an entry level build that can play most games, medium settings, maybe older games at high settings. Like GTA 5, if you're just playing Fortnite, this is more than enough. I don't know why you're playing Fortnite, but Anyways, so now we'll move on to the $1,000 build. I did go from AMD to Intel. So I went with the i5-12100F. Now this processor is one of the best bangs for your buck because according to user benchmark, with their gaming benchmarks, you should be scoring about 98%. 100% is really what you want to be to have a decent gaming build. But for the price point of $176, I mean, that's, that's one of the best processors you could get for under 180 bucks. Now with the motherboard, I went with the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming motherboard. Like I said, this processor and this motherboard, it's not gonna require any BIOS updates to make it work. If I had upgraded to a 13th gen i5, you would have had to update the BIOS or I would have had to go with a more expensive Z790 motherboard. At least with this processor, 12400F, I probably wouldn't see any performance increase if I use a Z690 versus a Z790. So it doesn't make sense to go with the newer motherboard. At $131, a Z690 motherboard, I mean, that's one of the lowest prices you can get. I stuck with the same RAM, DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM, Corsair Vengeance RAM, same one terabyte NVMe, Crucial P3. Now, I did upgrade the video card to a 3060 Ti. I went with the Zotac. For some reason, PC Part Picker didn't have the Founders Edition. I, I prefer the Founders Edition one, just I like the way it looks. And at the time of filming, it was actually in stock at Best Buy, so you can still get your hands on those. I, I prefer those, that's just preference, but if I were to build it, I would go with that one if it's available. I did upgrade the case to the new NZXT H5 Flow case. I got a H5 Elite case, which is very similar. It just has the glass and then it has the RGB fans in the front. So far, I like this case. It was easy to build in. It has that new fan placed so that it cools your GPU. So I did like that case. So with this $1,000 build, it fits the budget. It's $94.99 for that case. And then I'm going with the same 700 watt thermal take power supply, 80 plus certified, not bronze, but I have, a, I might have a couple laying around somewhere, but I've used it, haven't had any issues with it. It's not modular, but with this case, you do have that shroud that covers the PSU, so it's easy to cable manage it, even though it's not modular. That $1,000 build, you're looking at a total of $995.89. So that completes the $1,000 build. Now, so far with all the builds that I've talked about, all of the CPUs have a fan that they come with. They're not the greatest, they will do the job. These processors don't generate a lot of heat, like really high-end processors. So that's why I have included a CPU cooler. You should get by, you should be fine. If I thought it was an issue, I would sacrifice. Going with a component, not as good just to fit that in the budget. With these processors, I don't see the need to buy a better cooler just yet. All right, oh gosh, hold on, sorry, I gotta take another sip. It's getting a little warm in here. I have my little fire and it's just heating up. It's heating up the room pretty good. For the next build, it's that $1,500 price point. I did upgrade the processor to an i5-12600K. I actually have that processor. For gaming, honestly, it's amazing. I didn't really see a big difference between the i9-12900K and the the i5-12600K, so I was really impressed with it. I don't think you need to upgrade a processor more than that at this price point. You should be able to play any game you want. Now this processor no doesn't come with a cooler, and if it did, I still wouldn't use that Intel cooler. These coolers aren't really meant, they're not meant to cool processors that use that much power. Any of the K series processors, you definitely want a better cooler. But I do have a video on the i9-12900K cooling it with the air cooler. You can check that out. 
don't recommend doing it, but I did it anyways. To cool the processor, I went with the NZXT Kraken X53. That's the cooler I've been using in this computer, or I've been using it to cool the 12900K, and it's been, for gaming, it's perfect. I, don't, I don't, haven't had any issues. It's definitely capable of cooling that 12600K. I'm sticking with the same motherboard, that, that Z690 Phantom Gaming 4 motherboard. Same RAM, same hard drive. I did upgrade to a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. So it is an upgrade from the 3060 Ti. So according to PC Part Picker, you can get a 6900 XT GPU for $654.99. Which honestly, that's a really good price. You get 16 gigs of video RAM versus eight gigs on a 3070 Ti. According to user benchmark, it's about a 10% um, increase in performance. Now, if you can justify spending, it's only $30 more. You can get a GPU with slightly better performance, but at the $1,500 price point, a 3070 Ti is still really good. I went with the same case. I did go with a slightly better power supply. This one's actually a 750 watt power supply. It's 80 plus bronze certified. You'll get a more efficient power supply with this build. I did add another case fan just so that you had an exhaust just to get better cooling in the case. Your total comes out to $1,490.61. So right at that price point of $1,500. And I guess, let me be clear, this is not gaming 4K. If you're trying to game in 4K, this is not gonna game very well in 4K. But if you're doing 1440p, 144 Hertz, you can play ultra settings on most games or high settings at the least. So the last build, the $2,000 build, I did upgrade to the i5 13600K. I don't think you need to go any higher than that if you're just building a strictly a gaming PC. Sticking with the same cooler, it's gonna definitely handle that processor no problem. Like I said, I don't want you to have to update the BIOS with an older processor. So this, this build is gonna have an Asus Prime Z790 motherboard. I stuck with the same RAM. I don't see the need to go for DDR5 RAM just yet. I've been using DDR4 RAM. I've been doing all my benchmarks with DDR4 RAM. At 1440p, I think it's more of a flex. It's just kind of like, do you have DDR5 RAM? I have DDR5. If you just wanna build the best computer you can and you don't really have a budget, go ahead. I don't see the problem, but if you're trying to stick within a budget, I would stick with DDR4 RAM. There's no need to upgrade just yet. I did upgrade the hard drive with the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte NVMe drive. So it's Gen 4 versus Gen 3 PCIe, which means you're gonna get faster load speeds in games and you're gonna also get a really reliable hard drive. It's one of my favorites and this is definitely the one I would go with at this price point. I'm also adding a two terabyte mechanical drive. It's a Seagate Barracuda two terabyte drive, 7,200 RPM. So you can store whatever you need to store. I'm going with an RTX 3080. If you compare it to the, the similarly priced AMD GPU, it's the 6950 XT. According to user benchmark, the 3080 still beats it in effective speed. It's about 10% faster. Based off their benchmarks, their average scores was about 2% better. But right now GPUs, at least the newer GPUs, like the 3080 Ti, the 3090 Ti and the new 4090 and the 4080s, they're either not available or they're just priced really high. So that's why I went with the 3080. In 2022, a 3080 is still a very capable card. You can't do quite 4K, but you'll be able to play ultra settings in pretty much every game you want at 1440p and 144 hertz. So that's why I went with that card. And keeping the same case, I really like it. it cools well. I think it looks good. Some people may not think it looks that good, but I'm just going with the case that I know that works and is easy to build in. So with this one, I am going with a Corsair 850 watt, 80 plus gold certified, fully modular power supply. It's under 50 bucks. But for this holiday season, just keep, keep an eye on these prices. This is just the current prices that they are today. And you're looking at $1,966.39. So that fits right under that $2,000 budget. I'll leave that up to you to pick out which keyboard and mouse that you want. Like I said, I focus mainly on the gaming aspect. So yes, there are better processors. So I focus mainly on making sure I had at least 16 gigs of RAM. What's the best GPU I can get for that price range? And I did sacrifice looks at times over performance so that you could get the best performing PC for that price point. That's my take on this holiday season's builds at those five different price points. Like I said, there's infinity ways you could build a PC. This is just my take on what I think you can build at those price points. I'll have links to all the builds from PC Part Picker so that you could take a look. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. But yeah, I will be doing a review on the new H5 Elite case. I'll be testing the thermals. I'll be posting that soon after. That's it, my job is done. <laughs>